Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about something very near and dear to myself personally because it is arguably one of my all-time favorite bands as you can tell by the shirt. Today we are going to be talking about My Chemical Romance, MCR for those of you that know how it goes. This shirt as you can tell is off the Black Parade album and right quick before we get into this list which is ultimately going to be more or less like a top 10 it's not in any particular order but I tried to make it a bit of a challenge to myself to <clears throat> to choose just one song from each album so the main four albums including the five two song EPs from conventional weapons so that's gonna be my top song from more or less each one except for Black Parade by a roll of the dice to decide which song made it to complete a 10 so each album got a corresponding number on uh, for the dice with nine with 10 11 and 12 being no added song to make it just a top nine but at a roll of the dice the the roll landed on black parade getting that extra song so that's what makes it this 10 top 10 list so right before we get to that i'm just going to show off a bit of my merchandise I guess uh, fandom merch from MCR so I have two hats main one being this one with one of their singles off their second album three cheers for sweet revenge and then the bill has the demolition lovers on there and then I it's out of uh, sight right now but I also have just a plain white hat with the logo from the 10th album of the black parade which was released in 2006 and the 10th anniversary of it being released back in 2016 and then one other piece of merch that I have is going to be this uh, fun coat of Party Poison Gerard's characters from the Danger Days album only one I have uh, unfortunately at the moment but you know if I get more later on I'll perhaps make it a bigger list or show off more as I'm also going to be going to one of their shows in Los Angeles next year. It was supposed to be from October last year, but you know, due to everything that went on, the, the shows got postponed to this year and then later on once again postponed for to next year. So, alright, we're going to go ahead and be started. The songs, remember, are not in any particular order. I just went off the first albums I found, so the way the discography I was able to find first came from the singles. So we're going off the EPs, number one, two, three, four, and five, respectively. And then the albums are going based off their order. So it would be their album from 2002, then Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, Black Parade, and Danger Days topping off the end of the list. So we're going to go with song number one right here, based off their number one EP, Boy Division. <laughs> All in all, just a pretty cool song, nice and fast. It's not too long. It's just under about the three minute mark. Goes pretty quick. It kind of ties into their Danger, Danger Days part. So most of the thing with most of these, with the five EPs, is that they were written and uh, recorded between what was the tours of the Black Parade and Danger Days. So that these were recorded roughly around the 2009 era. So that's why some of it ties in particularly this one because at some point it does mention a uh, California and for those of you that know Danger Days the album and the the comic itself is based in a post-apocalyptic world in the year 2019 set in California for the most part at least and then it's been made into a comic and further down tied in to another comic project as well so all in all it's a pretty cool song most of these as you can see during throughout the list are a bit more fast paced. A few of them do get a little slower and stuff like that, but for me it's to generally all about like a fast paced song, something hard, something motivating that'll pump you up overall. So that does it for EP number one off the conventional weapons. Song number two off song number two coming off number two is gonna be uh, this one. 
ambulance. Nice clear angelic little chorus, little starts, and then as the beat kicks in, gets a little harder. Overall, beautifully done song. This one is a bit longer than the last one, coming in at just under the 4 minute mark at about 3 minutes and 52 seconds. Overall, it's a pretty steady beat, not as fully hard rock compared to the last one, still a bit more upbeat compared to some of their slower songs. But overall, I find this one of my top songs, especially going off just the two song EP that is number two. Same, same basic ideas, you know, I'm all about that just kind of motivating beat, something that can pump you up, especially since I am you know, tie it into my work. I use a lot of music for any time I teach a class, stuff like that, since the, the fitness industry is more or less my thing. But anytime I do their stuff, it's very music driven. I do a lot of like pop, pop punk music, hard rock, stuff like that. But um, more on that later, I suppose. Uh, so we're gonna move on to number three, which is a little slower compared to the last two picks. Coming in at a bit of a longer song at just over the five minute mark, around five minutes and 10 seconds, is The Lights Behind Your Eyes. Now this one is a bit more of a ballad compared to some of the other ones, a rock ballad if you wanna call it. It's not necessarily the most ballad song there is. It's like, um, it's about kind of like missing someone, someone dying, stuff like that, depending on how you choose to analyze the lyrics. But it's clear based off the lyrics that it is about missing someone, someone being lost based on the loss of another person. Nice and light to start, and then later on it does progress to something more rocky. So as you can see pretty much right from the get-go the lyrics do get pretty somber to start with overall is a lower song then once it progresses to the later to the latter part of the song it does tend to get more aggressive if you want to call it that I mean it is um, my comical romance is very much like a pop punk era band so that was you know from the scene of the 2000s so for a lot of people growing up that was very much the thing, a very emo type of scene, as with other bands from that era, especially in the 2000s alternative music scene. So from here we go to number four, based off the conventional weapons, and that is gonna be the track titled Kiss the Ring. So a quick change compared to the last song, it goes up. It's a little more aggressive, all in all it tends to be a pretty fast piece song. Nice and rocky. Quick lyrics, nothing too too somber. It's more about like, getting something done and just getting past through some stuff there. Song not too long. It's just over the three minute mark. So overall, it does tend to be most of these songs aren't too long. So we'll just play a bit and then just kind of quick analysis and then just go through the next song so as we get to the next song it finishes off the conventional weapons EPs number five the top song on there for me is gonna be burn bright a slight longer song coming in at just under four and a half minutes around four minutes and 20 seconds for those of you who want run times of the songs so we're gonna get a quick listen to a uh, couple seconds of Burn Bright, you know. Overall, a very nice song. Bit of a mix, you have that kind of light tempo and then you have that like aggressive beat. So they both come together and that is, this is arguably, I would say for sure one of my top songs just out of everything they've done, given covers, their EPs, their singles, live albums even. This would definitely have to be one of my all-time top songs from MCR. So we're getting, we just passed the 
first half of this top 10 list. Just remember these songs aren't in any particular order based on how I feel about them right now. These songs were just how I was able to find the discography. So this was going off the conventional weapon singles, numbers 1 through 5. And then the rest of these are going to be going through the discography actually in order. So we're going to go with their first album, second, their third, which based on the roll of the dice ended up getting two songs. And then the last one being at a fourth album. So we're going to have song number one off their original album. Well, this isn't song number one. This is um, song number six six technically on this list and in the album itself it is actually the last song for those of you that know the track is called demolition lovers it is arguably probably one of their longer songs coming in at just over six minutes nice and long to start off with has both beats once again coming together nice and slow to start off with very not necessarily grunge but it has more of a somber feel it's more uh, especially this two, the, the first two albums of theirs were a bit more interconnected with the story than their following two albums also had their own concept as well but there is that bit of connection between the I Brought You My Bullets, You Brought Me Your Love albums and the Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge ones. So as we continue on with listening to a bit of the song just so you guys can get a little bit aware to it Lyrics don't kick in until a bit from now, but once the lyrics kick in, I'll have you guys hear a bit of it, and then we can pause the song and move on. Alright, so for this song, Demolition Lovers, as you guys, as I told you guys just a little bit ago, it is from their first debut album in 2002. Last song on the album overall, I would definitely place this song at one of my top all-time songs of theirs. Just in general, pretty much all of their music is arguably my favorite. It's kind of hard to choose, so that's why I made the challenge of trying to stick to... Without that roll of the dice, I tried to stick to just having one song per album or single to make it a little more of a challenge as to be a definitive thing as to what I liked of them. Alright, so we're going to move on to the next song, number 7. I believe it's in the somewhere in the middle. No, it's in the, one of the top songs off their Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge album. So we're going to move on to the next song, which is To The End. So as you can tell right from the get-go, it picks up. Nice, strong beat. Compared to their first album, this one is a little more, and not necessarily, in, I mean it's engaging, but that wouldn't be the correct word to use for what I meant. It'd be more uh, aggressive, if you want to call it that. It has a lot more aggressive tones compared to some of the songs from the first album. Most of them do get that bit of Rocky and Scream com from their I Brought You My Bullets album, but this one does get a little more of a mix. You get hard beats throughout, you get a little bit of a pullback, and then from Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, they had a couple singles, as most of the albums had a couple singles, but basically uh, from this album is once they got a little more mainstream, so for those of you that came up in this era and listening to music, you'll recognize the songs, the singles from it were I'm Not Okay, Helena, The Ghost of You, and Thank You for the Venom, arguably also some of my top tracks from that album, but I would definitely say this is probably my top song off the album or you know what they do to guys like us in prison but since I had to kind of mix it up I decided to go with this one this song is about an average length for them it comes in at just over three minutes so we're moving on to their next album next two songs numbers eight and nine are gonna be from the black parade a concept album based off uh, the patient, which is who is a cancer patient, you know that is dying. the The tracks go off in a bit of a distinct order compared to other ones. Like, so the first song off the Black Parade is actually titled "The End," which is when 
it shows the patient dying and then the rest is just kind of progressing through the story you know it, it announced it shows everything that's happened it brings it ties in everything together of how the patient pretty much pushed away their loved ones friends family all that and by the end is basically alone and dying so um arguably one of my top songs off there is the second one titled dead Alright, so this song is actually the second song off the album. It goes immediately right after the end. It's titled Dead, but the the cool thing about this one is that the end basically and it ends with um what is the sound of a flat line for those of you that are kind of aware of what it sounds like from being in hospitals or um seeing it on TVs and movies, you know that like long just like pitched noise when the heartbeat essentially stops so for those of you who may have missed it what it sounds like right in the beginning it connects right to that it's right in the background underneath all the beat but it's that sound of the flat line which connects that last song to when this one kicks in so this picks up essentially right after so that's basically announcing to the listener that oh yeah no the the patient is dead so here's what happens now after that and the interesting of you know, the Black Parade is that most of these were concept albums, so they all have their own kind of little story. They tie in, some of them tie in together, some of them tie in with the singles and stuff like that, but most of them is their own uh, single storyline, if you want to call it that. This song is same about average, coming in at just over 3 minutes, around 3 minutes and 15 seconds. And we're going to move on to song number nine, one of also my top ones from the Black Parade, Famous Last Words. No, I know that I can't make you stay, but where's your heart? But where's your heart? But where's your mind? Uh, so this is... As you can tell, clearly one of the last songs on an album, just by the title alone, it is Famous Last Words. So it starts off pretty steady beats, a little lower compared to some of the other songs, but then it picks up steadily throughout. It's generally a good song. It comes, it's a little bit longer compared to some of the other ones. The only one that truly is longer than this one, at least as far as most songs and what's on this list in general, is Demolition Lovers. This song comes in at just under five minutes, so some of these songs are a little more average time compared to most other things you'll hear, but this song is generally just a very good song, not definitely definitely a good way to close out an album, close out a show. It is definitely a very like, solid song to close out with, for those of you that may have seen any performances by them, stuff like that, but... Yeah, you know, it's just definitely one of their all-time hits. S singles off the Black Parade. Obviously, the titular one is going to be Welcome to the Black Parade. Everyone, this album came out in, around the tail end of the you know, scene, email scene, but arguably everyone knows, even if it's not like your cup of tea, everyone kind of knows the way that it goes with Welcome to the Black Parade. You, you may not always know if it's them. You may not know, you know different things like that. But for those of you that have heard it, you you know exactly what it sounds like. Even if you don't know it was them or if it, you, it was just a random song you heard one time and you liked it, you, you, you'll know it's that song. So now moving on to our 10th and final song on this list. Remember, it's not these songs weren't in order. They were just a one, one to two song per album and or single. Our last song is based off the Danger Days album. Full title of the album being Danger Days The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. So um, basically concept album is the storyline is based in a post-apocalyptic world mostly in California in the year 2019. This is one of the later songs in the album but honestly this is probably my definitely my favorite song off this album for sure. A lot of the other songs were good in this one. The singles from Danger Days mostly being 
Na Na Na, and Sing. Those were arguably the songs from this album that made it the most mainstream. Na 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 being a song that was actually put into a couple of things. No, uh, movie-wise, I believe it was in the film movie 42 or movie 43 whatever the actual title is i'm not too sure as movies on my thing but we'll get to playing the song just a bit and this song is just about average time coming in at just under four minutes at three minutes and 50 seconds so we'll go ahead and play a couple seconds of the song so you can hear it now this song does start off light starts with you know just kind of wind sounds so basically a desolate landscape and stuff like that then the music kicks in and a bit of vocals and as soon as the full out vocals kick in I can go ahead and discuss the song a bit more and then kind of sum up the things and move on for this time Alright, so this song, as they all do, especially in this album, they all tell a story. Basically, it's, um, well, they, they're in their characters in the comics and stuff like that, but it's, uh, Gerard, Ray, Frank, and Mikey, you know, trying to save this girl who, for the sake of, you know, like, continuity is actually just called the girl right now, but this song is basically about after they try to, they're trying to save her, this, the, the songs all basically tell a story, you know, um, the girl's kidnapped, they try to save her, but what happens in this one is as they try to save her, they all basically end up getting killed for the sake of rescuing her, and that's when you know, their allies kind of are able to take her away and like finish the rescue. But basically here, especially given the line in the song, it's in the, well, I believe the next verse, but um, it goes, I'll tell you all how the story ends where the good guys die and the bad guys win. So that's you know, a clear clear um, statement about what happens in the story, what happens in you know, like kind of like the videos and, and all, all that. So it's basically just ties into the whole story of how to save the world from better, better living industries, if I remember correctly, is how they rescue this girl to make everything better in a sense and they end up having to do a big sacrifice for that mission itself so for those of you depending on age restrictions stuff like that this song as well as dead i tried to kind of keep it a little more um not pg but you know just for the sake of kind of accessibility to most ages i don't know depending on viewership and all that anyone who finds this video is maybe random ages of course but just in general, the only two songs that do have explicit marks on them are going to be Save Yourself, I'll Hold Them Back, due to a particular line closer to the end of the song, and Dead, same thing, due to a particular line word that is said closer to the end of the song. So for those of you who have issues with hearing any expletives in general, discussion in music, stuff like that, um, you may want to be wary of those songs or if you are able to find a song that has it edited out that's more or less up to you guys I suppose on that end for myself I personally don't mind I'm you know it's the way I see it they're just words you, you don't necessarily have to use them but not using them kind of gives them more power in that way anyway ending that little rant um, so a quick recap of this list we had top 10 songs not in any particular order, except for the Black Parade, which got two songs. The mission was to just stick to one song per single or album. So our first five we got from what songs that were recorded in 2009 for their Conventional Weapons EPs. Those track, those album singles were titled number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five, respectively. So our top 
five on this list just based on the order it was um, placed on the playlist is again no particular order this is just how I found them and put them on there boy division from number one ambulance from number two the light behind your eyes from number three kiss the ring from number four burn bright from number five demolition lovers from I brought you my bullets you brought me your love to the end from three cheers for seed revenge Dead and Famous Last Words from The Black Parade and Save Yourself, I'll Hold Them Back from Danger Days, The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. So, um, basically, welcome to the MC Army. This video was done spurred, this video was done specifically for July 23rd being the anniversary of the release of their first album back in 2002. So we're coming up on essentially 20 years of what is generally my all-time favorite band.